everyone, it's Maya, the creator and founder of Miss Young Home Owner. Welcome back to our page or our YouTube channel, wherever you're watching this. I appreciate you tuning in. I wanted to check in and give you all an update on my journey to home ownership part two or times two. I guess I should come up with a, a catchy name for this. Um, but if you've been tuning in, you know that I am currently in the thick of buying my second property and I wanted to film the process in real time and just provide you all some updates on how everything is going. So when we last left off, I was talking about some of the things that I was doing from a financial perspective to prepare um, for buying another home. So between the months of February up until now, which is July of 2020, I've been doing what I like to call my personal financial assessment. And that just consisted of improving my credit score, reducing my debt, um, increasing my savings, and figuring out the best strategy possible to pay for my down payment. Once I got to a good place with that, um, in, in the back of my mind, I had a set credit score that I wanted to achieve as well as a set amount of money that I wanted to see available in my bank account. And so once I achieved that, I then made the call to one of my favorite lenders. Um, shout out to the mortgage girl boss, Amy Dixon. Hey girl. Well, a lot of people kind of ask me, well, how did you know you were ready to buy your first home or even your second home? And for me, I had a dollar amount in mind you know once i reach this amount of savings i'm gonna go ahead and pull the trigger and call the realtor or i'm gonna go ahead and pull the trigger and sign up for a consultation with the lender or that in conjunction with reaching a certain credit score once i make this credit score or i'm in this credit range in addition to having this amount of money saved then i'm going to move forward with the home buying process so that's kind of what um was the trigger you know, for me to make the move. And so once I neared that around June, I contacted Amy um, and asked for a lender referral because I'm actually buying my house, not in the state of Maryland, but we'll get into that later. <laughs> and so I know Amy um, is an expertise when it comes to lending in this area. So I asked her if she had any mortgage lender referrals for the particular area in which I'm looking to buy. She put me in contact with a mortgage lender and I proceeded to work with this lender to get pre-qualified. Me and this lender, we set up a call. She kind of asked me what it was I was looking for, what I wanted to comfortably pay monthly for my mortgage, the particular area or zip code that I wanted to be in, my desired timeline for moving. So these are things that you definitely want to already have answers to. Where do you want to move? When do you want to move? What neighborhood, what area, the zip code? What are you comfortable with paying on a monthly basis for your mortgage? Are you aware, generally speaking, of the property taxes of that area? And what's your timeline for moving? Did I say that already? I think I might have said that already. But yeah, do you want to move in the next one month, two months, six months? that automatically may eliminate, you know, the ability for you to pursue new construction. Oftentimes with new construction, you can put a contract on a lot, but the house won't be built until six months out. Those are definitely questions that you already wanna have the answers to before you have that consultation call or that meeting with your mortgage lender. I would say the most important one is knowing what you're comfortable paying on a monthly basis for your mortgage. And you can evaluate that in a couple of different ways, but it's a very personal decision. Comparing your monthly income versus your monthly expenses, you know, all of the other debts and reoccurring bills that you have to pay for, all of that aside, what are you comfortable dishing out on a monthly basis for your mortgage? That's one of the main questions that not only your lender will ask you, but also your realtor from my experience. After that call, um, she proceeded to ask me for a bunch of documents and we posted something last week referencing how to prepare your documents uh, for the mortgage lender. So she asked for my W-2s, a digital copy of my tax returns for the past two years, employment verification, a statement of my retirement account, statements or bank statements uh, from my banks. <laughs> she asked for a copy of my license, social security ID, 
and I feel like I might be missing something else. W-2s, tax returns, bank statements, employment verification, social security. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> um, and because I already have a home, she also asked me for a copy of my homeowner's insurance and she also asked for my loan statement. Even if you are renting, those are pieces of information that you would have to provide. And even if you're someone who is not at the point where you're ready to get pre-qualified or talk to a lender, you want to know how to access these documents. For the life of me, it took me so long to figure out how to access my retirement um, statement. So just knowing where to go, where to click, what website to go to, and how to download these things will save you a lot of time and energy once your lender does request these documents. Oftentimes, your lender will have a secured portal that you can upload these things to. This is like highly sensitive information. So of course you wanna make sure you're not just sending it, you know, willy nilly as a zip file via email, just cause you know, anything can happen. So she asked me to upload them to this portal. Um, and then she took a couple of days to kind of get back to me. At the time, I did not have a digital copy of my tax returns. And so it took me about a week and some change to um, hit up my tax guy, get the digital copy. And so once again, these are documents and these are things that you can do now and just create a folder on your computer and have this stuff stored away and ready to go um, for when it is time to provide this information. Working with this lender, it kind of put me back into the mindset of when I was buying my first home. I was like, dang, this girl is all up in my business. <laughs> <laughs> but lenders are going to get all up in your business. It's not because they're being invasive. It's just a part of their job. They have to really know, you know, your current financial situation to determine your credit worthiness. Are you someone who is responsible and paying their bills on time? Do you have a lot of outstanding debt that you're not paying back in full or in a consistent, timely manner? She asked me a lot of questions about, you know, how much I make before and after taxes, how much my bonus was last year, how much my mortgage is, how much credit card debt I have, like what's the balance on my credit cards. She asked me a lot and it kind of made me feel a type of way for a quick second and then I had to realize like this is her job. And so something to keep in mind um, when you are talking to lenders, be open, be transparent. You know, you're providing them documentation anyway so they'll be able to figure out what your credit score is and how much debt you have, student loan balance. They'll be able to find out all this information. So don't feel attacked. This is a part of their job. Once again, they have to determine your credit worthiness as someone that they're potentially given the okay to or the bank is given an okay to to lend hundreds of thousand dollars to in the form of a mortgage loan. So yeah, mortgage lenders can seem invasive, but nah, they're, they're good, okay? I think this is something we touched on during night school, but you want to make sure that you are casting the net wide-ish when it comes to talking to mortgage lenders. Not all mortgage lenders or mortgage lending companies are built the same, just like with car dealers, just like with realtors, just like with any line of business. You can judge people based off of their customer service, how in tune they are with the market and, and the area in which you are wanting to buy. You can judge them based off of their interest rates and just the different loan products and um, the creative financing that they can offer you. Obviously, you don't want to be too creative to where <laughs> you can't pay your mortgage and you're in a situation where it's like, well, my lender said that I could afford this house. They came up with this, you know, this crunch the numbers. So you want to work with someone ethical and someone who's going to be realistic, but also just as driven as you are towards achieving your home ownership goals. I would say figure out a solid three to five don't quote me on that. <laughs> but at least three lenders that you can talk to to compare, you know, their service, um, customer reviews, the interest rates that they're going to provide, their knowledge on the area in which you want to buy, um, as well as the financial packaging and the overall mortgage product and service that they can provide you. Are they 
well knowledgeable about first time home buyer programs if you're a first time home buyer do they know about national and state sponsored programs and nonprofit programs are they a company a mortgage lending company that is going to encourage you to stack those programs together um allowing you as the buyer to walk away without putting down an arm and a leg for your down payment there is a grace period of sorts when it comes to your credit being pulled when a lender looks at your credit and they are going about pre-qualifying or pre-approving you, it is considered a hard inquiry on your credit. However, there is a grace period that allows for other lenders to pull your credit as well without it being dinged and impacted every time. You definitely want to take advantage of that. I think the grace period time frame varies depending on um, different factors, but just something to keep in mind. You don't have to restrict yourself to just using one lender um, out of fear that your credit score will be dinged. Something else that I realized when sending over my documents to the first lender, if you are someone who has an LLC or a business of any sorts, um, any losses that you reported could be counted against your debt to income ratio. So that was a fun fact that I learned and I'm still doing research on that, but something that was new, this go round of buying a home that I didn't have to encounter back in 2017. Speaking of debt to income ratio, this is something that we talked about a lot in season one and season two, um, but lenders look a lot at your debt to income ratio and it's a ratio that says exactly what it is. You know, it compares your debt <laughs> to your income and obviously you want to have more income than debt your debt to income ratio you want to make sure it's favorable there's a bunch of debt to income ratio calculators out there that you can look up on google yahoo finance bank rate is one of my favorites but you can kind of just get a feel something interesting to note about your debt to income ratio that i learned this go round is when it comes to your credit card balances um, mortgage lenders will look at the minimum amount that you're required to pay monthly to factor into your debt to income ratio. If you're someone that has a very large credit card balance and you have a very large monthly minimum payment, then that could negatively impact your debt to income ratio. Of course, you want to make sure that your credit card utilization rate is at least 30% or lower. But if you have a monthly minimum payment that's only $25 or only, you know, 30 bucks then that's not too shabby i think um, but those are a few things that i have learned so far um in getting pre-qualified for house number two i ended up not working with the, the mortgage lender that i am speaking of um and i ended up with my girl amy the mortgage girl boss and i'll talk about my experience working with her and getting pre qualify through prime lending in my next episode all right um and then i'll also start to talk about uh the process of finding a realtor once again i'm not buying a home in my state i'm buying it in another state so i'll talk about that next episode in the meantime make sure you guys subscribe to our youtube channel miss young homeowner check out our website missyounghomeowner.com we have merch we have blogs we recently just started doing consultations. So if you are someone who's thinking about buying a home and you don't know where to start, you can go to our website and sign up for a consultation um, just to learn more and get a finalized action plan on specific steps that you can start taking. You'll also get a recording of the consultation as well to refer back to. So yeah, subscribe to our YouTube channel, check us out on Instagram and Facebook, check out our website. Um, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Be safe, guys. Wear your mask. God bless.